Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see everyone out this morning. It's a beautiful day. I'm so thankful and blessed that you are here. And I hope that you feel blessed to be here uh, to serve and worship God and to fellowship together. It is great to see Johnny here this morning. Amen. Uh, I was worried about him. Been praying for him. And I hope you all have been too. And I'm just, it's a blessing to see him here this morning. And we continue to pray for Johnny. He'll continue to grow stronger. Uh, and his health uh, would be what he wants it to be, of course. Uh, before I start, I just want to make one announcement. I didn't, you know, wasn't paying attention, but the Bible Bowlers today will be at the Wiley's home uh, after services this morning. Now, at what times in your life do you turn to Jesus? When do you pray the most? Pray without ceasing. At what times or situations in your life do you feel closest to God? Is it when you feel like you're in a time of trouble and need to reach out to God? When I am at my best versus when I am at my worst. When things or events in my life are going well, they're going good. Versus when things or events in my life are going bad, not so good, poorly. The question today is, are Christians just a bunch of cowards? Wow, what a harsh question. Now, I got this because I was, of course, on Facebook and on YouTube, and this guy came on, I randomly popped up, and basically what his claim was, was that all you Christians are nothing but a bunch of cowards in life. And because when things go wrong, you need a crutch. You need something to turn to because you can't deal with your circumstances in life without praying or turning to some being who isn't real, by the way. God isn't real. And somehow, talking to this fake God, talking to this false God, makes you feel better. That makes you a coward. Now, when I heard that, I want to throw something at my screen. <laughs> but, who in reality... He says, you're just a needy bunch of babies, is what he, what he said. And when I was kind of thinking about this idea, it reminded me a little bit in, of course, The Wizard of Oz, that character that we know as the Cowardly Lion, who was supposed to be the king of the beasts, brave and strong, and all he could do was whimper and cry. And the question for you this morning is, are you a cowardly Christian? Because at my lowest, God is my hope. At my darkest, God is my light. At my weakest, God is my strength. Amen. And at my saddest, God is my comforter. Now when this I saw this face uh, put on Facebook, and many different people have, have kind of posted this. And it's pretty true, is it not? That in these down times of my life, I'm going to turn to my God who will give me the strength that I need to get through these down times. But what about the opposite? What about the opposite? What about when I'm at my highest? What about when I'm at my brightest? Now, in the other one, it said darkest. Or at my strongest? Or at my happiest? In other words, when life is going good, things are great in my life, then what's my reaction? Am I still reaching out to God when things are good? When my life is going great, 
when I'm being blessed with children and grandchildren and a job and all the things that God has promised to take care of me, when things are just at their best, do I go to God as much as when things aren't so great? And I'm at my weakest. At my best, am I still turning to God? At my highest, God will take me higher. When life is going great and I feel like I am on top of the world, Jesus can always make me go even higher. Feel even better. Give me greater hope, greater joy, and happiness. And of all that, makes me understand how much I owe. How everything I am and I have, I owe to Him. Isaiah 55 verse 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. At my brightest, God is my light. When life is great, when the present and future are so bright, so bright that I have to wear shades or sunglasses. I don't remember that song way many years ago. The future's so bright, I gotta wear shades. That's how that song went. As a Christian, we should always be wearing sunglasses. Because our future and our present and our life is so fantastic with Christ, the future is bright, the now is bright, I have to wear sunglasses, things are so great for me. That's how it should always be. Even when we face trouble, I'm still going to rejoice in the strength that I have in Christ. Psalm chapter 43, verse 3 says, Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Now, when I see that verse there, it says, Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Meaning, let them bring me to you. When things are bright, when things are good, let that lead me to you. There are times, I believe, that when things are good in our life, we become stagnant in our faith. And something that's leading to Christ, leading to God when things are great, well, I don't need God as much now. And so I'm going to kind of walk away from Him a little bit because when I'm weak and I need Him more, I turn to Him more. But when I'm strong and things are great, then I kind of take steps in the opposite direction. Let your light lead me. Let them lead me to you. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from Him and declare to you that God is light. And in Him, there is no darkness at all. God is the light, the brightest, the greatest, and there is nothing greater than having Him in your life. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Is your life so bright, so good, and so great and when it is, do you give Him the glory? Do you glorify Him? Do you thank Him? Do you praise Him in your prayers <laughs> as much as you ask for help when things aren't so great? In other words, when things aren't so great, man, Lord, I need you. I'm going to pray like never before because now I'm in need. But when now I'm not in need, when things are really good, do I still pray? Do I praise Him in my prayers? Do I tell Him how faithful and how great He is? 
Because typically we do this once a year, Thanksgiving. Oh, it's Thanksgiving time. Let's celebrate the harvest. Let's celebrate all the things of life that I have. When God is with you each and every day of your life, not once a year, but each and every day, how often do you pray that prayer of thanks and praise and honor and glory to Him when things are going really well? And I hope no one here is going to say, well, I'm never going that well. God loves you. God has done everything for you. And we owe Him so much. And in our prayers, in our prayer life, that should reflect that exact idea. <clears throat> Matthew, let your light so shine, glorify, glorify Him for all that He has done for you. Psalm 139, verse 12. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shine as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Is that true in your life? When I say the darkness and the light are both the same to you, they're not saying to God, but here's the idea for you as a Christian. Whether things are going good or things are not so good or maybe they're somewhere in the middle, are you still constant in your faith, your love, and your praise for God. You know, I don't remember which one speaker it was on Wednesday night talking about the Lord's Prayer. And he went through the points. You know which one we got down? Give us our day or daily bread. Take care of me, Lord. Meet my needs. I need you this. I need you this. Here's what I need. Please give me this. Please give me that. How often are we focused on hallowed be your name when we pray to God? Do we offer Him our praise no matter what we're going through in our life? The night shines as the day. At my strongest, at my strongest, Jesus is stronger. John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now notice there it says, tribulation, but be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. <clears throat> That means even when I'm facing things in my life that are difficult to go through, I will still have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. Is that how we face life? He says he has overcome the world. We shall overcome anything in our lives with the strength of Christ. When we are at our best and feel our strongest, it is good to understand that without the strength of Jesus, we are weak. We need Him when we are weak, but also when we are strong. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. We cannot defeat everything. We cannot win every battle. We will not always be victorious unless we have His strength to overcome. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. 
And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ may rest upon me. As a Christian, as a follower of Christ, the power of Jesus, the power of Christ, His strength, His promises, rest upon you. They rest upon you. Never forget that. You can do all things through Him who gives you strength. At my happiest, it is always more joyful in Christ. Psalm 35, 27 through 28. Let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. It says, let them shout for joy. When's the last time you shouted for joy? Except maybe on your birthday or Christmas. When was the last time you were so happy, so great, and said, Thank you, Lord, in your heart or mind, and out loud, thanked Him for what He has done for you and what He does for you and what He will do for you? Shout for joy. And then at the end, at the end, your praise all the day long. Do you praise Him daily? Do you thank Him daily in your thoughts, in your actions, in your prayers? This, this is the essence of the lesson this morning. Your tongue shall speak your praise all the day long. All the day long. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Habakkuk 3, 17 through 18. I love this verse. I don't often go to the book of Habakkuk for sermons or for lessons. But focus on what it says. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. What does that say to you? It sounds like life is not going so well. The things are growing. My flock is not in the, in the... It's not there. All the things I've worked for, all the abundance that I want, all these things that I want to be blessed with, it's not there. Things are going so good. And what does it say at the end? <clears throat> Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's the lesson this morning. The lesson this morning, at my highest, I will turn to God and praise Him and thank Him and love Him and give Him the honor and glory, not just here in worship and formal service, like we're here together, but in my life. I will praise Him all the day long. And that will not always be it needs to come out in my life. 
We live in such a negative culture. And not only that, but there are times that I see in my life, I don't know about you, where our culture is so anti-God, anti-Jesus, that it's like they're fighting words, man. And to have someone come on and say, oh, you Christians are nothing but you're cowards. You're cowards. Because you rely on this false God. And you only pray to Him when you're in need. You're nothing but a bunch of cowards. And my God tells me I'm going to praise Him all the day long, even if things aren't so great. He is not the God of weakness. He is the God of strength. How much strength does it take sometimes to forgive? How much strength did Jesus need to remain on that cross even though he was being mocked? Even though they were saying to him, come down and save yourself? How much strength did that take? Some people look at Christ as just a weakling. He allowed himself to go on the cross. How strong could he be? Do you know how much strength it takes in your life at times when things come into it to steal praise, love, and glorify God in the same moment that things don't seem so great? It takes strength. And God will bless you with that strength. He is not the God of doom and gloom. He is the God of resurrection and op optimistic joy. It is not called the dreadful news or the disturbing news of God. It is called the good news of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 2, 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now, 95% of the time we use that verse. What are we talking about? Talking about the birth of Christ. Angels show up. This kind of glory, this kind of praise should be part of our daily lives. Honoring God, honoring Jesus for what He does for you each and every day. And our life should be reflective of that great news. Glory to God in the highest. We sing a song today, There is sunshine in my soul. There is sunshine in my soul. Is that really true for you? Amen. Or is it, man, my soul is, is kind of dark. It's darkened today. Because of the fact that things aren't going well in my life. My health isn't good. You know, my job isn't good. I lost my job and I'm behind my payments or, or this or that. The other life takes over and sometimes we just become these fearful people. Rather than looking what God's Word says and say, I have confidence that God will get me through this one way or another, I'm going to praise Him and honor and glorify His name. Numbers chapter 6, 24 through 26. Now, if you listen to the Caroline this week, it was not Johnny. You were stuck with my voice. Johnny's really good at this. I'm not. But most of the time, I put this verse on at the end. It is a verse of comfort and praise and confidence in what God has. The Lord bless you. That is, may He keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. That is, may He demonstrate His grace to you. The Lord lift up His face upon you. That is, may He give you true peace. In my life, I want true peace. In my life, I want to be better at glorifying God 
not just on Sunday mornings, but in my life and in my prayers to Him, praise Him over and over and over again. Christians, we have so much to be happy about. We have so much to give the glory, to give God the glory for. And we need to rethink a little about how we measure God's presence in our lives. I am at my highest when I'm reaching for the clouds. I am at my brightest and there is no darkness in my Lord and Savior, Jesus. I am not my strongest. I can overcome anything because Jesus overcame the world. And I am at my happiest, happiest. The joy of the Lord is my strength. True, lasting, daily happiness is a part of my life because I have Him right by my side. I pray that when you go out into the world that you will express this joy and praise of God through your actions in your life. And not only spend 80% of your prayer life, if not more, asking and requesting help from God. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do that. It is obvious to most Christians and to all Christians that when we are in need, that's who we turn to. But when things are good, do we spend as much time as we do asking, as we do praising Him and thanking Him for all that He has done? I hope and pray that when you are at your weakest, you turn to God for strength. And when you're at your highest, your strongest, you will praise Him and thank Him for all that He has blessed you with. This morning, if you have any need at all, if you need to put on Jesus in baptism, become a Christian, confess, repent, become a Christian today, allow Him to work in your life and give you great strength and great joy. If you need prayers because you've fallen short and things just aren't going right for you right now, let us pray for you. Whatever needs you have, come forward and let those needs be known as we stand and sing.